Hey guys. We're back. And ladies. This time we are guest less. <laughs> guest less. Yes, we are. We, Alan is my guest today. Yeah, and Rahana is mine. Aw. Aw. Yeah. I guess uh, we did have a guest, but they canceled on us. So yeah. we they had an emergency, so yeah. we are improvising mm-hmm. and just chatting together and letting you listen in on it. Um, on what makes the magic happen for this podcast. Yeah, and we've hit a milestone, a uh, one-year anniversary since uh, when this comes out, yeah. since Rachel's podcast. Whoop, whoop. It's crazy. Yeah. So crazy. Remember that? It's been, like, it, it doesn't actually feel like it's been a year in some ways, but then in others, it feels like it's been Oh yeah. so much longer. I don't even know. It's felt like a year for me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like, know about you. <laughs> Like it just, it feels like that episode, like I remember sitting down and having her on and like talking with her and being so excited about this project, this thing that we're doing. Yeah. And, um, so I think that's the part that doesn't feel like it was that long ago for me, but Mm. yeah, I mean, we've had on a lot of guests, a lot of amazing guests, um, some really wonderful people Mm -hmm. in the past year. And that's awesome. And I just love that, that all of them took the time and sat with us and talked to us and like opened up and and really wanted to be here like that that made me really happy right yeah i think uh a lot of the guests i I know originally were just people like we knew and yeah yep um but we happen to know some pretty baller people so that helps yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. which was the point like remembering why we're doing this is important because it does I remember before we started this, it was kind of like, like I said before, like all these people that should know each other that don't. Which really blows my mind sometimes. Yeah. Like it seems so weird that they're not all just like best friends. But I get it too, (laughs) because a lot of the people we talk to have jobs and do this. Yeah. And that's where basically extracurricular activities come from. Right. Right. And then hopefully become the main part of what we do. So it's the goal, a life goal. It is. Yeah. And once somebody figures that out, if they could just let us know how that works, that would be <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, because we we obviously all participate in things like Z Fest, the festivals, fifty fifty. Yeah. We've learned all about that in our past episodes, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean we've had some people on that are really representative in mm. in those festivals like both by doing work and being on multiple projects that are shown there and and compete essentially and also people who do a lot of the work behind the scenes for all of those and the Twin Cities Film Festival like all of you know the big things going on here so it's been interesting seeing both like kind of in front and behind yeah the, the scenes and then all. like talking to Melody um on the state level. That was wonderful. On, like basically the national level. Like yeah. what is the landscape for us? Right. Yeah. What should we expect? What can we do? Right. To make a change happen. And they recently made changes to how the application process works. So it's not taken advantage of mm-hmm. in the future and taken away from filmmakers and long term growth. Yeah. That can come from passionate people that do live here. Exactly. Um, people. Like, I think people like Josh, who we had on, talking about how he made his features, but then went to work with Robert Rodriguez. Right? Like, what? (laughs) It's like, (laughs) why is no one paying attention to this? Yeah. You know, it's like, within our community, at least. Right, right. uh, Or if they are, that's great, but it's just like... We, we need more of this. Right. And we need a place where that information can get out, where that can be talked about, which is essentially what this is about. Mm-hmm. Um, because even if that's happening and people are talking about it, if they're not talking widely enough and more outwardly, yeah, then it, the word isn't getting out. Like things aren't spreading. And I like that whole bit about the NPR coverage on like the whole Super Bowl thing mm-hmm. and getting the Tonight Show out here. Um, yeah, it was a lot of money that went towards that. Oh, absolutely. Which I get, but it's just kind of like, but damn, wow. How many features could I have made on that? <laughs> right. Two. Oh, the answer man. is two. 
<laughs> the answer is two. How many people were employed by that? Oh, many. Oh, yeah. No kidding. And then just to have it there for one day. I mean, I guess it does. I, I see the d- debate on both sides because nationally it does bring more attention to us. Right. And shows that we can carry a heavy show like that. Yeah. For a day. For a day. <laughs> <laughs> for a day. But, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. And we got the state fair coming up. I am so excited. <laughs> I know that this is going to be airing like um, towards the end of it, but I am really excited about the state fair. I love the state fair. Yeah. It's, I, I struggle with it, to be honest, because like, I love the food and the walking around and buying things that God knows I don't need and shouldn't pay as much as I do for. Right. Um, like it's it's ridiculous but i try to only go once or twice a year and i spend a good chunk of time there so that way i don't have to go multiple times um and what I, yeah. yeah um <laughs> <laughs> anymore and uh what what's the first food you go for what's what what is it ah uh, okay well the first first food i go for is the fucking bucket of cookies but i get mm. shut down because i am made aware that that is not a reasonable first go to item <laughs> Which it's not. I'm aware of that. Gotta get the I'm, milk. Right? <laughs> so, For it. so like, we just, we kind of meander. Like, we, try, mm. I, I don't try to pace myself. Right. But those that I go with try to pace me for me <laughs> if you will oh, um wow. so yeah because we get like the fish tacos from the food building oh they're amazing amazing hmm. um the bucket of cookies yeah uh the deep fried pickles uh-huh. fucking love them um there's a bunch of new foods this summer oh. that I'm very excited about there's um the Leslie Nope and me is excited there's like Wait, a what? waffle thing Oh yes, yes. There's yeah. There's like this waffle thing, and I don't even care what else is in it, as long as it's not bacon, because mm. bacon is disgusting. And Wait I a minute. Fully <laughs> support that message. I can't. Uh, I no, can't handle bacon. I can't support. Your I message. can't do it. Even the smell of it, it like like Jer is not allowed to cook it at home. What? Maybe once every couple of years, if like something like he I had n- I'm, wow. surgery for some reason a few years ago, and so I like I. I was like taking care of him, so I made him bacon. Uh-huh. It's the only time I've ever made it. F that. Um, it's disgusting. But I yeah, can't I can't sit here and let you bash bacon <laughs> like this. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, no, I refuse. <laughs> like, mm, mm, mm. okay, I so bacon's bacon. a no-no for you. Bacon's huh? a big no-no. Um, oh. So as long as it doesn't have that in it, I'm up for whatever they put in so that waffle. So waffles, huh? Okay. Waffles, man. And there's like this key lime tart fucking thing that just mm, i want to eat like ton of them and i think that they have like something fancy going on with the at the wine spot this year <laughs> and god a knows wine, I, what there's like a, a wine spa? building like oh. a wine spot oh spot yeah, spot um but yeah like a place where you can go and get different wines <laughs> and they do oh damn i would spend my whole day there um but yeah, so like you can go and get like a flight of wines and I'm like, oh, yes, wow. please. And I will, I always stop there. That's good. Um, but yeah, State Fair's my jam. How about you? What do you get? Oh, uh, definitely cheese curds is number one on the hit list. Don't make that face. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I don't like cheese curds. <laughs> you don't like bacon. You don't like cheese curds. I, I don't, I, I don't I like think... cheese very much is my thing. Oh, um, okay. Some cheese, like. Are you lactose intolerant? Oh yeah. Okay. But that's not why I don't like it. I just, I'm just or, picky. But yeah. I'm just an asshole. Um, <laughs> definitely a- the French fries. Ooh yeah. Do you get the garlic fries? Oh, I just go to the French fry stand. Okay. Like the one that's it's just says French fries. Yeah. <laughs> they make a ton of money off of that. Oh, absolutely. I I when I worked at the radio station there and I worked every day of the state fair. Oh my god. <laughs> um, don't want to do that ever again. But uh. I get it because if you're working like that stand, they pay like, you know, college kids to work there and right. um, pretty good, a, a reasonable rate though. Yeah. But they, I met the people that own that stand and they make millions. Oh, I believe it. In like 10 days. And it's just like, I would think most of those stands do, especially the ones that are there every year. Like, yeah. They've got to just, their whole year is made that weekend yeah. or that week. Yeah. Yeah. And they have multiple, they have maybe two or three mm-hmm. French fry ones. So yeah. 
Um, of course, the cookies too. Naturally. Uh, yeah, obviously. Obviously. You have to take that bucket over to the milk. Yes. So you can, you know, get it down easier. <laughs> right, right. The unlimited God, I love milk. Cookies. Although, I just think of the Ron Burgundy thing. Like, milk was a bad choice <laughs> on a hot day. <laughs> milk was a bad choice. But they keep it ice cold, so that's good. They do a very good job of that. Yeah. And then the dairy building. Like, okay, so you guys, I can't, like, I can't eat dairy. Like, <laughs> I'm, I am. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. lactose intolerant. Okay, that makes but sense with the cheese curds. God. You still have to let me know what's going on with the bacon, though. Damn it, I love ice cream. I will eat ice cream every day for the rest of my life, and I don't care how my body reacts. I don't care. Like, ice cream is, mm. oh, my God, it's amazing. True. Especially from there. The dairy bullet, like, it's legitimate. Like, oh, my God, that mm. ice cream. Ice cream. I love it so much. I can't handle it. That reminds me of what when we had Tom on, he talked about his ice cream right? family. Yes. That's why I was very, very intrigued by that conversation. Yeah. And I was asking him <laughs> far too many questions because <laughs> ice cream is my jam. Um, it was very important information that I still use to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Like he gave me ins and outs or gave us, like gave temps. everyone ins and outs about, yeah. <laughs> and like this location, like Nelson's is okay, but like Grano Creamery. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I use like Izzy's is good too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's very important to get quality ice cream, you guys. Um, yeah. If you don't remember that conversation, that's fine. You can go back and listen to Tom's episode, and it's within the first like ten minutes. Yeah. We have a very in depth conversation about <laughs> ice cream. I highly <laughs> recommend it. Um. But that shows, you know, people do other things besides film, like they're what they're involved with. It's yeah, it's different here. So exactly, yeah. like everybody's got different hobbies and fun things that they sure. like to do and enjoy. And yeah, who'd have thought ice cream and stuntman? I mean, I feel like it ice really cream connoisseur, right? Yeah, I f- I feel like it goes together. I don't know. Hmm. My one issue with the state fair, um, like I love it, I really do, but. My issue with it is that it means that summer's like over. And I am not originally a Minnesota girl. So I hate the winners here. Like I absolutely, I'm that annoying chick who will just do nothing but complain for nine months. And everybody's like, why don't you move? And I'm like, I freaking want to. Um, I can't, like I just can't. I don't know how why people stayed here to begin with. Why is there any population here when it comes to the winter? <laughs> like I love the community and I love the people and yeah. I love a lot. Like in the summer, I love the landscape, but I'm like, oh, in the winter. It's yeah. So bad. So that's the one thing that kills me about state fair is like, I, as soon as that it's over, that's all I'm thinking about is the fact that that's on its way. Do I mean, like, at least we have football, but yeah, yeah. Football is back. Yeah. Football. I'm so excited. Yeah. I have a couple of drafts coming up, and I'm not prepared. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to do so bad. I'll be like, so I don't bad. know. This guy, <laughs> <laughs> he's usually good. Right. Oh All the same gosh. old, same old. Who's Ugh. this new guy? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. From Atlanta. I'm pre- yeah. <laughs> I'm going to probably just draft people that aren't even playing anymore. Who knows? Yeah, I know. There's so, so. many holdouts, and yeah. like... I can't keep it straight. Who's in, Antonio who's Brown's out? foot is still like jacked that up. idiot. And his stupid helmet. He's like, I'm not going to play without this helmet. Get over yourself. <laughs> I'm watching Hard Knocks right now on HBO. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I, I really enjoy it. Who are they covering? The Raiders? The Raiders. Oh, okay. Um, so first of all, I forgot Antonio Brown went to the Raiders. And then right. all of a sudden he pops up and I'm like, whoa, that makes sense. Because I wouldn't want to deal with him anymore if I were the Steelers too. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, and so, and I hate the Raiders. Like, I'm a Niners fan, so I hate the Raiders. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, uh, so it's tough watching it, but it's actually really interesting. It's a very fun show to watch. Um, right. But yeah, and so he was just like talking about his foot and then the helmet, and I'm like, God, dude, just get over yourself and play the damn game. You get paid enough money. Yeah. Just do your freaking job. <laughs> they, they get that. But that's off. That's just me. Those God complexes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Which. I mean, I get it. Right. I do, but like, as a normal human being, it's still frustrating. Like, whatever. Anyway, I could go on about that. Yeah. Yeah, the... And, well, at least we have fall, too. Yeah. That's always nice. Yeah. Sweaters and scarves and boots and... 
pumpkin spice, spice latte. latte yeah. I've never had one of those. I refuse. It's not so great. I mean, it's yeah. okay. It's just overhyped, I think. That's, yeah, that's the, I can't. Uh. I I get it. I Like today, though, I had this hankering. I wanted a shamrock shake for some reason. <laughs> oh, I love that. And it's just like, well, you can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> I've never actually had one of those either. They're, Which is again, weird because I okay. love mint. But right, like, right. Yeah. Yeah, if you like mint, it's a good one. Yeah. It's pretty smooth, you know. But at that point, you could just go to like Dairy Queen and get like a mint something, something blizzard. I don't know what all's in a shamrock shake. Well, but I, Well, it's a shake, you know, so you drink it. You don't dig into it. Like, <laughs> Ew, I'm Alan. I'm fancy. <laughs> it does have milk in it. So I'm I, just kidding. I don't it does. blame you why you haven't had it. So I, that's Again, I, <laughs> I just had a blizzard yesterday and I <laughs> regret nothing. <laughs> Okay, like okay. it's uh, ice cream will just always be like one of my like top three loves of my life. Oh, like I can't help food, it. Yeah, yeah. No, just in general, <laughs> just overall. Like throw a person in there, throw acting in there, ice cream, boom. <laughs> just makes it way better. Exactly. Especially when you get a combo deal. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah. it's. I have problems. Speaking of, uh, well, the fall here. Well, I just saw The Big Lebowski. Uh, Such a good in movie. In theaters. Such a classic. That's crazy to me that they had it in theaters again. Like, how yeah, long did they, was it just a one-day thing? Or It was, like, two days. They was had it? A sun, like, this particular CMX was the theater okay. brand. Yeah. Um, they have Flashback Cinema, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. And they do it every sunday and wednesdays so nice yeah that's so awesome and that's it's a good such way a to get people movie. back into the theaters too is like right. give them what they like already yeah. so they had like back to the future the matrix heck yeah this yeah so it's you know what's funny is i love all these movies and i have all of them but i don't watch them at home <laughs> i know like, right like i'm, <laughs> I'm just like yeah, i'm gonna have them but i'd rather watch x y and z like all these other things and netflix and amazon prime yeah, hbo do, 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 and do, do, do. stream but then it's at the theater and i'm like oh my god we have to go like right. it's it's so dumb like because that like they're readily available for you but there's something about seeing those classics in the theater especially yes. if you weren't around or you weren't old enough to see yes. them the first time around like that's so cool that's true i such an experience didn't see it when i was younger yeah yeah because um, i mean when did that even come out like 90 I think 98. 98. <laughs> yeah. I'm very, very off on that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I went with a first timer and it was great to see her reactions kind of like, oh, I remember I when I was that young. <laughs> right. Aw, cute. How old is she? No, I'm, no, I mean young to the movie, you know. Oh, gotcha. I was like, hmm. no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's our age. I was like, damn, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. It's so good. And that, <laughs> seeing it the first time. Yes, seeing it for the first yeah. time. But also for me, seeing it in the theater. Yes. Like in its, not original exhibition format, but still like in its same aspect ratio of film and right. at that time. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to see like, it's not going to be, you know, 239 scope. It's going to be like, I, I guess it was four by three or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It was a little wider than that. But yeah. It was, wasn't quite 16 by nine either. So yeah. Still so cool. Yeah. So cool guys. <laughs> and just getting all the feels from like, I've been bowling recently more often. So it's, yes, it's been nice to, you know, I always think of that movie whenever I go bowling. It's just, mm -hmm. like, what's your favorite place to bowl? Mine is Park Tavern in St. Louis Park. Um, I've only bowled two places recently, so I guess I'd have to say Bryant Lake Bowl just because I've been there enough times recently. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I do like that. I haven't bowled there, but I've been there a couple times for mm -hmm. like the cinema yeah. lounge cinema deal. Cinema lounge. Cinema lounge. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I, I really enjoyed like the atmosphere there. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, hate the parking. <laughs> yes but <laughs> i got a ticket there the last time i went no did you yeah. really oh i'm sorry Parked a little too close to a stop sign son of i've i've done that i've gotten that ticket oh <laughs> i hate that 
It's like there's no okay, like, fine. Like if you don't want us to park like jerks, then make a damn parking lot. Yeah. Or a garage something. Something. But overall, atmosphere. Now there I know is a garage is better than parking close to this. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, okay, the ten dollars is better than this. <laughs> yes. Oh God, no kidding. Yeah. Which I don't want to pay ten dollars, but still, you know. Right. But you still don't want to pay like a hundred dollars for just a stupid for like but an inch of <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's like who's going around uptown just like uh, right. no nope, wrong one jerk has Here this measuring go. tape going from <laughs> from the stop sign out. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, I'm sorry if there's any policemen listening. Yeah. <laughs> Police officers. Men or women. Um I apologize. Please don't put a ticket on my car. But anyway, so Brian Lake Bowl. Um yeah. I I do really enjoy the the atmosphere and also like the cinema lounge uh events that go on there as well. It's I've been to a couple and it was really fun. We should go to the next one. Hmm. Tell me more. Why? <laughs> Why should I go? When is it? Uh, what can people it expect? It is September 11th at 7 p.m. Never forget. Sounds like a... Yeah, exactly, right? Um, 7 p.m. On 9-11. On 9-11. And... Like, what are they even doing this time? Like, why would I oh, want to go? Let's Question see mark. here. Um, Alan? Looks like a Tracy? trailer. Oh, my trailer. They're what? Showing. Yeah. Alan. <laughs> Alan's trailer is premiering. Premiering. Son of a. And it's going to premiere ahead of its release. So you won't be able to see it online. On, and so you'll have to go to the cinema to see it which means all y'all should have your faces at cinema lounge on september 11th 7 p.m yeah or one of you it's a good idea and me um (laughs) what day of the week is that it's a wednesday good note Mm -hmm. everybody get wednesday night off um especially because a lot of you are like filmmakers and stuff so you probably have weird jobs that make you work at night so definitely get that (laughs) night off um, so what can people like, like, what can you like tell us about your film? Oh, like little hints or, or about like the ta- the, the trailer, the teaser. There's not much to say about the teaser. It is what it is. It's a, it's a trailer about the film. <laughs> You're such a good salesperson. I know. We <laughs> talked about brevity. It is what it is. Yeah. Either you want it or you don't. <laughs> That's the hard sell. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Oh my God. But it's, oh, fine. I'll ABC this. Always be closing, right? Yes. So. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll talk about it there a little bit more, too. But for us, I'll say Snippet. it's been a long Snippet. road. Yeah, it has. It's You've been, been working on this for years. Long. Yes. Since um, well before we started doing this, we were talking about that. Yeah. Yeah um yeah it's almost four years it's it's early 2016 mm-hmm. started talking to my composer oni who yeah. we had on who here, we had yeah um I guess. about making a project that started with the film score yes and that's what electric addiction is that's the name of the film um it it, it didn't start out with the title we didn't i didn't know what this film was going to be about right um the only thing i knew was what he gave me was music, you know, because mm-hmm. I find a lot like uh, with Clara, we talked about music and how that's an inspiration. And that's kind of the case here. Mm-hmm. We started with film music and then drew a film out of that. Right. And by we, I mean, Jane Barnes, Colby Taylor. We met several times in 2016 and 17 i think Mm -hmm. at an ikea ikea (laughs) ikea and you know we'd it's a good meeting spot to just hang out and write in their lounge or cafeteria whatever yeah um kind of nice (laughs) mise-en-scene you know look overlooking like this the mall of america yeah everything and even in winter we went there in winter once too that's actually pretty cool yeah yeah but it was kind of like, eh, it's, I don't know if the snowstorm's coming in. Yeah, no kidding. But we're uh, we're trying to figure out like plot lines for it there. We were writing, so mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so we actually had a couple of emails and messages from people uh, with questions for us that they wanted us to eventually get to, which we've 
kind of skirted for a little while, but yeah. I feel like this is a, the right platform for that. And one of those was actually about electric addiction and um, like what you could, what you can tell us about it before it releases. So like anything about um, even, cause I know we've had some um, of the people that have worked on it, like Oni mm-hmm. uh, and a couple others as guests. Right. Um, so is there anything that you can tell the listeners um without giving anything away <laughs> well um i kind of don't want to give it away before the bryant lake bowl two in order to get people to right. go <laughs> so it's exciting um, and it's new and it's crazy and it's fun yeah. and you got to be there to see it and it's been a labor of love it's mm-hmm. over three years in the making and going on four by the time we hit our festivals run in 2020 yeah um it it's i think it touches on a lot of personal things that people um are dealing with now even and, and obviously in general right um the premise of the film is that you know we're constantly on our electronics so um which is funny cuz y'all are on your electronics right now <laughs> <laughs> it's okay so we're away it's fine <laughs> so yeah get out and go to bright lake bowl it'll be nice yeah that way you're not on your electronics, but you're kind of You're welcome about to them. use your electronics during that, too, while I'm yeah. talking. <laughs> but, yeah. So, if for more information on that, um, yeah. everybody should go on the 11th. Again, I'm going to keep saying it. September 11th, 7 p.m., Brent Lake Bowl. Yeah. Be there. Well, and as for more questions we have, there was one for you, Rahana. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. Yeah, I know. Uh, oh. What's... What are you up to with your acting? What, what's what's next for you, I guess, kind of? so. That's a great question. <laughs> um, listener, you and I are both wondering that. Um, so I it, I guess I just I have to get kind of real with you guys. Um, I don't know. So acting is like my great obsession and love. Um, I think about it every single day, and it consumes mm. my entire heart. Um, but I think with that, and I'm sure a lot of other performers, actors, um, all of that get this as well. Like there's a great deal of fear that goes into that. Um, especially being away from it for so long. Um, I, I have distracted myself with, with school and with trying to, you know, just financial things and all of that to the right. point where I have been away from it for so long that now um, I'm, I have that fear of getting back in and, and have having lost whatever I was capable of doing previously, um, which I don't necessarily believe, but that's still there. You know what I mean? And um, like that fear of failure is very prevalent in me mm-hmm. right now. So I need to uh, get over that and, um, and I think that I'm I'm gradually doing that. Um, I started. I am doing a, another secondary profession um, business uh, on the side. That's something that I enjoy as well. And I think that that's helping me kind of leap around that fear um, and kind of build a confidence in myself. But I've also noticed that even though it's doing that, it's it's just different. Yeah. with film and with acting because like with this other venture that's something that I enjoy and I care about but if I were to fail then I were to fail and life goes on mm-hmm. whereas with acting if I were to fail like what the, I don't know what else I am outside of that like that is the thing that I I give the most shit about in life so it's it's really hard Um, I'm very hard on myself about it so I I do plan. Oh, you guys, I'm so vulnerable right now. Um, so I am planning. I'm getting I'm getting a new job. Uh, yeah. When this comes out, that'll already be kind of in the works. Nice. Um, and with a more steady, uh, reliable. Well, it's re- more reliable in many senses, I guess. Um, but I'm hoping once I do that to start maybe taking some more classes again and auditioning and um, just trying to get past that fear and that, that stupid like 
voice in the back of my head. Um, right. Cynthia Urich, who is um, was my first uh, and closest teacher in the Twin Cities here. I absolutely love her face. Um, she had a saying that was... Um, well, she she had a few few things. First of all, she always used to tell us we're not, we're not saving babies, so it's okay. And I <laughs> I constantly think about that. That's true. Um, yep. But um, yeah, she she had a few different things that she would say, and it, it they stick with me. And um, there are things that I need to continuously tell myself in order to get myself back in the saddle. So I am planning on getting back there. It's just a matter of actually kicking my own ass and doing it. Um, which I'm hoping to do soon. So for a very long answer to a very quick and short question, um, nothing as of right now, but hopefully in the near future, I will be doing things. I would love to participate again in the 48 hour film festival and Z fest this year. Yeah. Um, I have been out of the 48 for a few years and I have never actually done the Z fest. You should do Z fest next. I really want to. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of a hope of mine. So we'll see if anybody's, if anybody's listening and is going to do those things and wants to, uh, collaborate. I would yeah. love to talk to you about that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's me. Well, I've seen you over the last year, since this is our one year mark. <laughs> one year. Well, you yeah. know, it's longer for us, but still. Well, yeah. One year for episodes. Right. Um, I've seen you, yeah, struggle with, like, doing so much work on yeah. the side that you don't have time to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, with this new job that you're getting, that will help. Yeah. It'll kind of secure things where they should be for you, I think, I hope. Yeah, I, th- I think um, so. I really do. Good. And then also what I heard heard you say kind of reminded me of what Bill said a little bit in his was that he was at that point where he wanted to do, you know, acting. And it was just kind of like have a sit down and he was leaving his job, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever, and was going to try this out. And um but you're, you're, it's kind of like that for you. Just kind of like, yeah. well, is this going to happen? No. Is this going to, is the world going to end? No. Is, right. You know, it's like, yeah. well, you really don't have that much to lose. Exactly. So, yeah. You never, would, it's n- no, fuck. What is it? One of the things she always said, it's never what I think it is and anything can happen or something like that. Hmm. Um, it's amazing. And it's true. It's so true. Like nothing that's going to happen is going to be what you expect. And whenever you put yourself out there, regardless of what situation it is, literally anything can come from that. Um, Yes. So it's just a matter of doing it. Right. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. But I empathize with you. I I know that fear is a filmmaker too. That um, mentality of, is this going to be good enough? Um, like, Like with electric here, I've had to carry this, for so long, even post production, it's yes. taken way longer than I expected. Because I thought, like, <laughs> naive <laughs> me was like, "Oh yeah, we're just gonna do it, and then it's gonna be done like a yeah. short film, and it's gonna be done, done, yeah. done." But and with the weight of it, like it's your baby, like that's your thing, and so yeah. you're even more particular about everything as you should be. But because of that, it's such a bigger process that you're anticipating. Yeah, it's a whole and different animal. Yes. Um, than I'm used to dealing with not, but the other thing with electric addiction as a case in point, it's different because it's, I constantly challenge myself to do Mm -hmm. different things. And this was done way differently than any other film I've done. Right. It it was what I call reverse filmmaking because we started with the music, which is a post-production move. Then we moved to writing well, sort of. Sort of. Then we cast it, and then the actors did their thing. Yeah. Um, did their thing, yeah. I think someone, I think, talked about, oh, yeah, an upcoming guy talked about yes. improvised yep. um, dialogue. Some improvised work, yeah. And that's how this went, too. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, oh, this is going to be challenging because nothing's the same. Right. Yeah. But that... I think that that's just going to make it all the better. Like once you get your final result, you're going to be that much more satisfied with it. Right. 
it's it's bittersweet. Yeah, absolutely. I hate to use Clara's movie title. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> right? You just got to plug it. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Clara. Yeah, but yeah, no, I I would say that's a good way to describe it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so moving on from me so, talking like an idiot. Uh, I have another question oh, from okay. a listener for you. Um, so we've mentioned, we've talked about a little bit about electric addiction, um, but, and you've mentioned it a few times. So it sounds like after that, like after this feature, um, he wants to know what, like what else is on the horizon for you? Like what is your next creative challenge for yourself? Oh boy. I thought like during the process of electric addiction, I've done a few short films for like Z Fest and pretty much just Z Fest. Mm-hmm. Um that's kinda kept the creative juices flowing a little bit. Yeah. Um because usually when you're working on one now that I'm working on one project for so long and now I know what that's gonna be like, short films are a good way to kinda get you back on your feet a little bit mm-hmm. because the turnaround time is quicker. Um that being said, it does delay you a bit on your own other stuff. So yeah. uh, it's kind of a give and take. Mm-hmm. So, um, geez. I don't know what, what mm-hmm. where exactly I was going with that, but it's just, it's more about the, the process. So, yeah. So, I mean, you're going to, you're definitely going to be doing more things. Yeah, for the next next thing, I think right now I'm just kind of halting all the next things until this is done. Which makes sense. You want, because otherwise it could last you forever. I'm so close to the end of this. I need to put the final stamp on it Mm -hmm. and then I can move on to the next thing because otherwise that just creates more anxieties. Yeah. And then I get depressed and it just ends up being this vicious cycle right. like Jamie talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, it, it happens on the creative end too, because when, when we talked about like how long you're with these projects, it's, it takes a lot out of you. Mm-hmm. So, Oh yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Well, thank you listeners. Yeah. Um, that was actually really awesome that we just got some random like mess- Facebook messages and emails, um, with questions and it kind of brought up a, a cool idea, you know, like if anybody else has yeah. questions, whether it's about us, about the cities, like filmmaking wise, like if it's just about the cities, don't bother us, but, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but like seriously, um, but yeah, about like the community, about your film, about like just anything, mm. like any questions you want us to ask other people, maybe, um, send them in like email us or Facebook message us or uh, Instagram the page, message or us. Instagram message the page. Like yeah. both of us look at that stuff. And even if we um, maybe don't respond right away because you know, we're I'm bad at life. I'm adulting is not fun. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, we Did we're keeping track adulting? of this stuff. Adulting is the worst. <laughs> um, but like, seriously, we're keeping track of all these things and we want, we want to hear from you so we know, you know what you guys want to hear. And we want to answer questions that you maybe have again, whether it's about us, about the podcast, about Mm -hmm. the, what the podcast is about for other people. So yeah, it was awesome. Again, nominate your, who you want on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Or nominate yourself. Who knows? Heck yeah. Yeah. If you're a listener and feel like, yeah, I could take these questions. <laughs> right? If you think you can take the heat. If you can go deep with us. Sitting at, yeah. whoa. Alan. We just got real with just them. Kidding. So, I mean, come on. That's true. Yeah, I got a little too real. I'm really sorry, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> a little right. awkward. Um, but yeah, anyways. So, now you know us. We can get to know you. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one last thing I want to touch on before we go. True that. Professionalism. Mm, preach. What do you think of when I say that, Rahana, with with regards to film here or um, in general? I think of people showing up on time, being committed to doing their job, being committed to the collaboration process. So like not hearing that isn't my job, that's not what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. Um, taking 
constructive criticism in order to better the project as a whole. But at the same time, also um, just being willing to to be all in and still have fun. That's what I think. Like, I don't think that you have to show up and be a stickler and be just straight faced and not enjoy yourself in order to be professional. That's right. That's my job. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) That is why Alan is here, you guys. What, you think I have fun doing this with him? Just kidding. I do. He's a blast. Um, He's just a hoot. But yeah, like doing your job, being reliable, Mm -hmm. being helpful and not being like, well, it's not my job. I'm not here for that. Like, oh, well, then get the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. And I I, I think, yeah, Jamie, again, we talked about that, too, just Mm -hmm. about people willing to do other things and there's a lot yes. of willingness here in our community oh absolutely um which means there are like yeah bill and jamie just talked about it i mean yeah just going that extra mile and just doing mm-hmm. extra things that just make things better yeah and it ultimately makes you feel better i think too because mm-hmm. you can say when the product's done yeah i did that yes yeah having the the good of the project in mind versus what am I going to get out of this? Because if that's your mindset, then you don't belong there. Yeah. Um, but if you're there because I care about this project, I care about this role, I care about my, you know, my working relationship with these particular people, then you're going to be fine. Yeah. And that's work the ethic, obviously. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So... But I feel like if you don't have a good work ethic, you are not going to last long in this particular business anyway. Right. Or if to you, any degree. Or if you're one of those types that like to burn bridges with people. Yeah. Which we've witnessed recently on social media. Uh, me personally too. So it's just kind of one of those things where one of the things I realized after um, I, I'm... <laughs> a fallout. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm going to say like I, I went... I'll say this again, just I'm not trying to be like, oh, this is me, but <laughs> Helen. yeah, but I went to can four years in a row and during those four years, they changed from year to year, mm-hmm. but some things didn't, people didn't move. There are certain people in place that stay there for the long haul. Yeah. Our community is much smaller than you think it is. Um, over those four years, I witnessed people come and go. Mm hmm. But I've also witnessed people who stayed for the, those four years and beyond now. And it is interesting to see, like, just how small our community is. Yeah. From here to L.A. to France to Korea to China, all of it is interconnected. It mm-hmm. is, you have no idea how close you are to it right now, Rahana. It so. is right here. It, it, the Internet shrunk everything. Oh, Absolutely. But it also gained a lot of extra people. Mm-hmm. So, but people come and go. That's what Jamie talked about with LA. Like they're used to new blood all the time. Right. But here, like, where people are like staying the course, you'll see that. Mm-hmm. And you'll see them show up time and time again. So, uh, professionalism means obviously showing up, but also being seen too. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much you know yeah. just stay professional because you never know you really never know it's who true. you'll run into again and maybe have to work with yeah. yeah i mean it's just like any other job like if you're driving down the road and you have road rage and you flip some random person off and then you show up and you have an interview with that person <laughs> later you're yes. not going to get the job like you don't like just be a decent human being at all all times yeah that's pretty much it and i get not everyone's going to be able to get along on set right. or in a place because you throw random strangers into a room yeah we got a big brother episode going on or something yeah. exactly <laughs> but um you no know, just be decent guys <laughs> right but also like i get it because on sets it feels like a frat party or something i don't know a college party yeah lots of food we're having fun we're joking <laughs> right and then we do some work and you know yeah and it is a social business too. Or it's a, a visual business. Oh, yeah, you, you have to be seen, and you be see and be seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so professionalism is just you know I think 
uh, ties into that whole reputation of who you are too. Mm -hmm. So true that. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much all we had to say. Yeah. We, uh, don't want to talk to you guys anymore. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Totally kidding. (laughs) Speaking of professionalism, um, I know, (laughs) but yeah, um, we actually are running out of time, Mm -hmm. but I'm actually, I'm really glad that this turned out to just be like our anniversary episode. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. We don't get to sit down and chat with each other very much let alone to you guys. Right. So this was phenomenal. Well, thanks for joining us again. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Thanks for listening. Bye.